Hello, my name is Dilip Fotedar and in this ship handling series lesson, I will share with you my understanding of pivot point and transverse thrust. Let's consider the following example. If 50 ton force is applied to a ship at a similar angle and at two positions, position 1 and position 2, one can expect a lateral and a parallel shift of ship A to position B. That will be true as long as the ship is not going ahead or astern. However, if the ship was moving either ahead or astern, the lateral shift will not be parallel. She will end up more like ship C or ship D. Why does this happen? Well, let's find out. Essentially, a ship rotates about a point situated along its length and this point is called the pivot point. When a force is applied to a ship, which has the result of causing the ship to turn, the ship will turn around a vertical axis, which is conveniently referred to as the pivot point. The position of the pivot point is not fixed and it will move about the ship depending on whether the engines are going ahead or astern. When a ship is stopped in the water, the pivot point is generally half of the distance from the bow to the stern. When we put engines from stop to going ahead, the pivot point shifts forward. With an astern movement, pivot point shifts aft. Once frictional inertia is overcome and momentum fore or aft is achieved, the hydrodynamic characteristics of the hull will take effect. The pivot point will settle back at about a third of the distance from the bow when going ahead or a third of the distance from the stern when going astern. Let's now consider the impact on ship handling of a moving pivot point. In this situation, we have two tugs, both with equal leverage, attempting to push a ship alongside onto the berth. If the ship is stopped and both tugs have equal leverage, the ship will move laterally and parallel. So in this case, if the tugs are used to bring the stop ship alongside, both tugs should be ordered to apply equal force. However, you need to bear in mind the shift of pivot point if you decide to give a kick ahead or a kick astern. If you decide to give a kick ahead on your engines, the pivot point will move forward towards the bow of the ship and the ship will pivot around that point. As a result, the forward tug will have less leverage than the aft tug. To bring the ship parallel to the berth, aft tug must reduce a percentage of her power. If you decide to give a kick astern on your engines, the pivot point will move back towards the stern of the ship and the ship will pivot around that point. As a result, the aft tug will have less leverage than the forward tug. To bring the ship parallel to the berth, forward tug must reduce a percentage of her power. Another important aspect of ship handling is the knowledge of transverse thrust and how it can be used to our advantage. Transverse thrust is the tendency for a forward or astern running propeller to move the stern to starboard or to port. Transverse thrust is caused by bias of suction between the blades and the paddle effect. Propeller blade close to the water surface churns in a largely aerated medium. 
This medium is not as dense as the medium in which the bottom blade is turning. The pressure differential and the paddle effect thereby cause freewheeling and lateral thrust. As a result, stern moves sideways in the direction of the propeller rotation. On a ship with a right-handed propeller, with thrust ahead, propeller will be turning clockwise. As a result of the transverse thrust, stern will walk to starboard and with a twist around the pivot point, bow will go to port. As a result, the right-handed propeller ships on ahead motion will have a tendency to turn to port. This is a major reason for their port turning circles to be tighter than the starboard turning circles. On a ship with a right-handed propeller, with a stern thrust, propeller will be turning anti-clockwise. As a result of the transverse thrust, stern will walk to port and with a twist around the pivot point, bow will go to starboard. On a left-handed propeller ship, for a head thrust, propellers will be turning anti-clockwise as a result of the paddle wheel effect, the stern of the ship will walk to the port and the bow will cant to starboard. For a stern thrust, propellers will be turning clockwise as a result of the paddle wheel effect, the stern of the ship will walk to starboard and the bow will cant to the port. Let's now look at the impact of the transverse thrust on twin screw ships. First we will consider outward turning twin screw ships. In outward turning twin screw ships, for the ahead thrust, the starboard propeller will be turning clockwise and the port propeller will be turning anticlockwise. Starboard propeller will generate transverse thrust and attempt to walk the stern towards starboard. However, the port propeller will attempt to walk the propeller to port side, thereby negating and cancelling the transverse thrust created by the starboard propeller. Turning at a spot becomes possible on these ships. By using a combination of transverse thrust and fore and aft propeller thrust, turning at a spot is possible. For example, if we had to turn the ship on a spot, we can run one engine ahead and another astern. The counter thrust created by the propellers will result in a turning movement. The transverse thrust created by the outward turning propellers complements the propeller thrust. If the ship intends to make a starboard spot turn, she will put her starboard engine to a stern and port engine ahead, thus creating a rotational movement towards starboard. The transverse thrust created by the both starboard and port engines will walk the stern towards port, thereby complementing the rotational thrust created by split engines. However, that's not the case with inward turning propellers. On a ship with inward turning propellers, the starboard propeller turns anti-clockwise when going ahead and the port propeller turns clockwise when going ahead. To turn the ship on the spot, we can put a starboard engine to go astern and port engine to go ahead to create a rotational thrust. However, the transverse thrust created by reversing the starboard engine will walk the stern to starboard and the transverse thrust from port engine is as such towards starboard. So the overall transverse thrust by splitting the engines will be towards starboard which will not complement the rotational thrust as it did with outward turning propellers. To achieve a similar rotational movement, a greater propeller split will be required on a ship with inward turning propellers 
then on a ship with outward turning propellers. On a single CPP ship, propeller always turns in the same direction and therefore transfer thrust is constant whether the propeller is going ahead or astern. On a right-handed CPP, for both ahead and astern engine movements, stern walks to starboard. Even at zero pitch, propeller continues to rotate, so she will have a stern walk. On a right-hand CPP, for both ahead and astern engine movements, stern will walk to port. On a twin CPP ship, with either inward or outward turning CPPs, transverse thrust will cancel each other even when the engines are split. Okay, that's us done for the transverse thrust and pivot point and I shall see you soon in one of my other lessons.